Pseudomonas is a gram-negative rod that appears what color on McConkie's agar? Correct, white, because it is a lactose non-fermenter. Is it oxidase positive or negative? It is oxidase positive. It can be immediately identified in the lab because it has a characteristic odor and color. The color is blue-green due to Pseudomonas producing pyocyanin, and the smell is a sweet, grape-like odor. Pseudomonas is a natural soil contaminant, commonly found in moist environments, which can enter the hospital when gas spring in plants and flowers. P. originosa normally does not infect healthy hosts, but you should worry about pseudomonas in immunocompromised hospital patients who are burn victims or are medically instrumented with catheters or endotracheal tubes. It has several virulence factors. Exotoxin A, which inhibits the elongation factor 2 to disrupt protein synthesis in human cells. Do you remember which other organism can inhibit EF2? Carini bacterium diphtheria via ADP ribosylation. Endotoxin is an important cause of pseudomonal sepsis. Pseudomonas also contains many enzymes, such as elastase and alkaline protease, that can disrupt connective tissue and allow for easy spread of the organism. Finally, pseudomonas is resistant to many antibiotics, and therefore antimicrobial therapy should be chosen wisely. It is usually a combination of an aminoglycoside and extended-spectrum penicillin. Pseudomonas can cause a variety of diseases. Almost all cystic fibrosis patients are colonized with pseudomonas. Exacerbations of cystic fibrosis are often associated with necrotizing destructive pseudomonal pneumonia. Otherwise, pseudomonal pneumonia can be seen in patients who have had prior broad-spectrum antibiotic therapy or respiratory instrumentation. Pseudomonas can cause sepsis in populations with neutropenia, diabetes, extensive burns, or leukemia. External otitis, or swimmer's ear, not to be confused with otitis media, can be caused by pseudomonas and presents with pain on ear traction, sometimes with discharge. A more malignant form of otitis externa can be seen in diabetics with pseudomonal infections, whereby the infection spreads into the mastoid, causing bone destruction and damage of cranial nerves. UTIs can also be caused by pseudomonas, especially in those who are catheterized or on broad-spectrum antibiotics. Pseudomonas can cause infections of foot ulcers in diabetics. Pseudomonal endocarditis can be seen in IV drug users. In this case, the right-sided heart valves, usually the tricuspid valve, will be affected as contaminated needles introduce pseudomonas into the venous blood, which then travels through to the right side of the heart first. Finally, pseudomonas can cause infection of the skin hair follicles, a condition known as hot tub folliculitis because it is often seen in people who sit in warm, contaminated water of hot tubs. E. coli is a lactose-fermenting gram-negative rod that just about everyone has heard of. It is normally a part of our gut flora. Various virulence properties of E. coli are responsible for the wide range of diseases that it can cause. Fimbriae on E. coli allow it to invade the urinary tract and cause UTIs, cystitis, and pyelonephritis. E. coli's K capsule can cause pneumonia and neonatal meningitis. Its LPS endotoxin is responsible for septic shock, as in most gram negatives. This table describes the various presentations of gastroenteritis that E. coli can cause, depending on the type of causative E. coli strain. EIEC stands for enteroinvasive E. coli. It does not produce a toxin, but the microbe causes necrosis and inflammation of the intestinal mucosa, which presents as dysentery similar to disease caused by Shigella. ETEC stands for enterotoxigenic E. coli, which produces heat labile toxins, which stimulate adenylate cyclase to produce cyclic AMP, or heat stable toxins, which stimulate guanylate cyclase to produce cyclic GMP. This kind of E. coli can cause traveler's diarrhea. EPEC, or enteropathogenic E. coli, rarely can produce a sugar-like toxin, but often does not produce any toxin at all. Instead, its mechanism of pathogenesis is that it adheres to the intestinal mucosa, causing effacement or flattening of the villi, and also causing inflammation, both of which decrease absorption and cause diarrhea. EHEC stands for enterohemorrhagic E. coli, of which O157H7 is the most common serotype. This also produces a shiga-like toxin, which causes swelling of the endothelium and narrowing of blood vessels. 
This causes hemolysis and platelet consumption, as well as reduced renal blood flow, leading to hemolytic uremic syndrome, which is a triad of anemia, thrombocytopenia, and acute renal failure. EHEC can be differentiated from other E. coli by its inability to ferment sorbitol. Another lactose fermenting gram negative bacteria, Klebsiella, is urease positive and causes low bar pneumonia that is often severe and necrotizing. Klebsiella usually only affects diabetics, alcoholics, and other people at risk for aspiration of oral secretions. Red currant jelly is the appearance of the sputum in people with Klebsiella pneumonia, and also a buzzword description to remember for Klebsiella. Salmonella and Shigella are both motile lactose non-fermenting gram-negative rods which invade intestinal mucosa via M cells of Peyer's patches and cause bloody diarrhea. Salmonella is usually acquired by eating contaminated food products such as chicken, egg, or dairy products, while Shigella is acquired through fecal oral transmission. Salmonella produces hydrogen sulfide gas, whereas Shigella does not. Shigella is a common cause of diarrhea found in students at schools. There are several species of Salmonella, but the most important is Salmonella typhi, the causative agent of typhoid fever. Typhoid fever occurs when S. typhi invades enterocytes, takes up residence within circulating macrophages, and travels to extraintestinal sites. Symptoms include fever, headache, abdominal pain mimicking appendicitis, in addition to splenomegaly and a transient rash, rose spots on the chest and abdomen. S. typhi can also exist in an asymptomatic state within the gallbladder, giving the host the ability to continue to infect others. This was the case with typhoid Mary, a famous asymptomatic carrier of S. typhi in the 1900s, who worked as a young cook in New York and infected several people with typhoid fever. She was later incarcerated against her will by the state to control the epidemic. Campylobacter is one of our two comma or S-shaped organisms. Remember the mnemonic that Campylobacter likes a hot campfire because it grows in 42 degrees Celsius. You should remember that it is a common cause of bloody diarrhea when acquired from undercooked chicken and unpasteurized milk. Also remember that Campylobacter is one infection that is believed to be responsible for triggering a resultant ascending peripheral neuropathy known as Guillain-Barre syndrome. Our second comma-shaped gram-negative bacteria is Vibrio cholera. It can be differentiated from Campylobacter in that it grows in alkaline media, whereas Campylobacter grows at 42 degrees Celsius. Cholera is a profuse rice water diarrhea that is mostly a problem in developing countries with poor hygiene since it is transferred by the fecal oral route. Do you remember how the cholera toxin works? Right, it is a CAMP inducer, meaning that it activates GS to permanently increase CAMP, which causes excretion of electrolytes and consequently loss of water. Yersinia is a fully zoonotic pathogen, meaning that it mostly infects farm animals and pets. We are infected by Yersinia when we ingest contaminated water and milk from these animals. Remember that Yersinia causes gastroenteritis with bloody or watery diarrhea. Key things to remember are that it can mimic appendicitis pain by spreading to mesenteric lymph nodes and that it is often seen in daycare centers. Helicobacter pylori or H. pylori is a gram-negative rod with a corkscrew helical structure and flagella that allow it to burrow deep within the mucosal layer of the stomach in an effort to flee the acidic stomach environment. H. pylori colonization creates chronic inflammation of the stomach, gastritis, which irritates the cells of the stomach and results in increased acid production. Stomach and duodenal ulcers are a result of the damage to these organs' protective mechanisms. H. pylori makes the enzyme urease, and therefore you may be asked about diagnosing H. pylori with a urease breath test. This test involves a patient swallowing urea labeled with radioactive carbon compounds. If the patient has H. pylori, its urease will break down the swallowed radioactive urea into carbon dioxide and ammonia. The patient will be asked to exhale, and the detection of radioactively labeled carbon dioxide will indicate a positive test. In practice, however, the urease breath test is rarely, if ever, used. Instead, the presence of serum H. pylori antibodies, or H. pylori stool antigen, is commonly tested. 
treat with triple therapy, which today most commonly consists of a proton pump inhibitor, clarithromycin, and amoxicillin or metronidazole. The spirochete family includes Borrelia, Leptospira, and Treponema. We will talk about each one of these in more detail. For now, just remember that they are technically gram-negative, but they are difficult to see with light microscopy because of their small size. Although, if you use aniline dyes or gam sustain, you may be able to visualize Borrelia on light microscopy because it is the largest one. Leptospira and treponema will require dark field or fluorescent microscopy to be seen. Therefore, other methods are employed to diagnose the presence of spirochetes. Leptospira is a spirochete with two hooked ends. It is transmitted through water contaminated by animal urine from rodents, dogs, fish, and birds. Puddle stomping, working in sewers, and most commonly, swimming in contaminated ocean water are some ways that leptospira can be contracted. This is why surfers and people in the tropics are more likely to develop the disease. Leptospira causes two diseases. One is characterized by mild flu-like symptoms, jaundice and photophobia, while the other is the more severe Wales disease, characterized by kidney and liver damage. Borrelia burgdorferi is transmitted by the Ixodes tick, also known as deer tick or black-legged tick, which is pictured here in its many stages of development. Borrelia burgdorferi causes Lyme disease, which is common in northeastern United States. Treat prophylactically with single-dose intramuscular doxycycline in any patient with a known tick bite. Longer course of oral doxycycline for patients with observed erythema migraines rash and IV ceftriaxone for patients with later manifestations of disease. The erythema migraines rash is classically described as a red rash with a central clearing. However, it will often just have a central area that is darker or lighter than its surroundings, but not necessarily clear. Use this mnemonic here, bake a key lime pie, to remember the other manifestations of Lyme. Bell's palsy, arthritis, cardiac block, and erythema migraines. 